Welcome to Thoughtful Planning, the place where real conversation, expert insight, and a touch of humor meet to turn our end-of-life uncertainties into self-assurance. I'm your co-host, Santiago, a history buff and a big kid at heart. And I'm Honey, your guide through the intricate dance of planning with care and a whole lot of warmth. Every week, we're here to turn those intimidating are we ready moments into confident everything is under control moments. Today's journey is one you won't want to miss. Hi, welcome to Thoughtful Planning. I'm Honey. And I'm Santiago. Today we wanted to share with you where we are on our journey to end of life planning. We actually started this back in June of last year when we were prepping to go on a on a cruise and figuring out what we needed to make sure that our stuff was updated. So we talked a lot about what we're doing, where we're going. So to start off, let's talk about our essential question. Where are you on your journey? And how often do you think you have to check your journey map? So this quarter, it seems like a little bit of things. We wrapped up our taxes. So we do. (laughs) We do have a a business. So I actually have a business on the side. We both work full time. I have a business on the side. I've had it for over six years now. And then we have this business. It's called Legacy Toolkit. And that's where Thoughtful Planning, our podcast is related to that business, Legacy Toolkit. And actually that business is under Santiago. Anyhow, I had to do the taxes for that, right? So for an LLC with a partnership, and that's what the business that I've had for over six years is, the taxes are due March 15th. And so I had to get that done. While I was doing that, though, what it made me do is look at all of the recurring expenses that come about and seeing, do I want to renew that item or not? So I started to make, guess what, babe? Another Google sheet to track all of our expenses and especially to see, like, think, just think about that. After a year comes, if you're not really using that thing, then do I need to spend more money to do it again? And in that Google sheet, it talks about, I looked it up, like, what are the cancellation policies for each of those items so that I'm aware of what I need to do? Like, do I need to do it 30 days in advance? Can I do it the day before? Like. What does that look like? So in doing that, then creating outlook reminders, which I mentioned earlier, setting those up so that it's a trigger for me. And what I noticed that's helpful for me is, you know, because it it started to fill up my calendar if I was doing it like exactly by the every 30 days or every six weeks, my calendar was looking very full. So what I decided to do is put it the reminder every Sunday. So that means, yeah, it could be a little bit more than six weeks or a little bit more than a month out. But every Sunday afternoon, like around 12, I have my reminder set up in there with dis- the description. And I made those recurring for whatever the time frame was for that item. Most of them were annual so that I can remember to go back. And I, now I've set it up once and now I don't have to set that up again because it's already set up for me. So that's a tip when you're looking at your expenses and setting up reminders, try to set it up for a day that that you're not going to maybe be doing a lot of stuff. So it doesn't take up an appointment time from something else during the week that you might yeah. be doing instead. So that is, yeah, to me, that's a huge thing, getting our taxes done. That's like, whew, that's done. All right, next thing. Also, what I was working on last night was looking at our recurring subscriptions because I was thinking like how many do we have (laughs) and there's a lot if you think about it I mean there's some of these we have all these different like Netflix or Paramount or Disney like all these subscriptions but not only those but maybe you have a monthly uh, massage subscription or chiropractor Chiropractor, subscription or there's so many different subscriptions out there even memberships, right? So what does that look like and how can you find those easily? So there's a couple ways you can do it. So I had been hearing about one called Rocket Money. So I went to Rocket Money and I created an account is what I did. 
And in creating the account, it was quite interesting because it says on there, if you want the premium feature, then, you know, you pay the price, right? But guess what? Babe, on the price, it was a sliding scale. So it was like, you pick the price. So then I was confused. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what price to pick to be premium. What does that mean? Yeah. So on my phone, I'm here Googling, like, how do I, what is a premium price for rocket money? What does that mean? So anyhow, it was like, well, $4 each month. So over the year, that's $48. Yeah. So I did, I selected that. And then it said, okay, now pick the account. Cause by then I had linked my accounts and everyone listening, please, with any app that you ever use, make sure you're reading the terms and conditions before you use it. And then this one is connecting bank accounts, credit cards, things like that. So it uses another app called Plaid to connect. So your bank account gets connected to the Rocket Money. So just read the terms and conditions so you can learn more about that. But let me finish giving you my rundown of, of this. So after I selected that $4 premium amount, then, and by the way, you do get a seven day free trial for this. So one tip here, if you want to try this out, make sure it's during a time where you have the time so that you just use it for the seven days and cancel it and you're done. Then you don't have to pay anything. After you pick the $4, then it says, which bank account do you want to use to pay for that? So I selected it, but then it said, oh, you can't use a bank account. You have to use a credit card. So I was like, okay. So then I go to enter my credit card information and then guess what? You got to pick the price to pay again. So I was like, okay, well, I want, obviously I want to pick $4, but guess what? It didn't let me. <laughs> well, they got to pay their credit card fees. So that's probably right. So I, I had to choose $6 instead. So I thought that was interesting. But anyway, I thought, well, first I thought it was my mouse. So I was like, well, maybe it's my mouse. So then I went to the laptop to try to use the mouse on the laptop. But really like the lowest option was either zero, which meant then you weren't going to get any premium features or $6. So I went ahead and picked the $6. Now, the premium features, there's they offer quite a bit of things for premiums, such as like it can do a budget for you. It can help you with your net worth. But one of the main features I was looking at trying to look to resolve for myself was all the subscriptions that we have. That's what I really wanted it for. And that was available on the premium. But more so what I was interested in is that Rocket Money would cancel that for me. Okay, but let me keep talking. So then I sign up for the $6, get in. And on the left panel, that's where they have the recurring part that you can go to to look up all the recurring subscriptions. And you can see all the items that come out. What I was hoping for was to export those items into like a CSV file or an Excel file so that I could sort through it on my own. Now, it didn't allow me to do that. So instead, I had to get creative and I just did a screenshot of all of the <laughs> recurring items, right? And luckily, I do use a program called Snagit. It's really cool so that it gives me one screenshot. So I'm not taking a bunch of screenshots, but anyway, that's a cool tool to use. No, that's a paid tool, but it's really cool. Anyhow, so I captured all those, but also what you would want to do is there's in the settings area for under your, like around your profile, there's a, a button for premium. So I clicked on that and you can manage your premium there. And guess what? Then I was able to change the price back to $4. So keeping that in mind, because I I wanted to do that right away, actually. And that, that was one of the first things I did, too, was go try to find out, like, where can I change the price? So I did that. But after I went to go use it, so I went to the recurring section and I found out, well, first I couldn't export. Then I wanted to try to cancel one of the subscriptions. So I hit the little three dots to cancel. And then it says it has a pop up box. One of the nice things in that pop-up box is it does provide a phone number, and I believe it's a website, that you could reach out to to do it on your own. So that's good. But I wanted it to do it for me. That that was the whole reason for this, right? Yeah. But I fill in all the information in the pop-up, you know, your name, your address, your phone number, email. But then it asked for account number. Well, I didn't have the account number. And I even logged into the site to try to find the account number. I couldn't find the account number. So it's like, 
okay. So I really couldn't cancel through this thing and I couldn't really figure out how to do that. That was a whole point for me to sign up for this. But then also on that recurring page, it was broken out into like three sections of some sort. And in one of the sections, I wanted to cancel one of those items, but it didn't even have the option for me to cancel or Mm -hmm. even try to cancel because I did have an account number for that one, but I just couldn't figure it out. So in the end, what I did is I unlinked all the accounts that I had linked (laughs) and then I just canceled the subscription altogether so that I won't be charged at all anymore. (laughs) But anyhow, I just wanted to share my experience with that because I thought it sounded really cool. I just couldn't figure it out. And if anyone that's working at Rocket Money knows, maybe can walk me through it. Maybe I just didn't know what I was doing, but I'd be happy to give it another try. But otherwise, uh, yeah, the other option you can do is you can log into your bank accounts and pull your bank statements. Same with your credit card, pull credit card statement. And you could also export those to Excel or CSV. And then you can see Notice what are your recurring items month over month. You can do it that way too. So it's... It sounds like it'd take a much more time than yeah, was, what Rocket Money said they could do. Right. Well, and Rocket Money did pull all those items in, which was, that was real nice. So technically you could use Rocket Money for that is just go get all the items in your list because it'll pull them all for you. Pull them there. And then if you need the phone numbers or websites, you can click on each one of those and get the information real quick that way. So that would be a helpful tip. And it gave you monthly, quarterly, and annual subscriptions? Right. It pulled in all the, kind of the annual stuff. So I had connected my business bank accounts there, and it pulled in, like for example, my insurance I pay annually for that. So it did have that in there. That's good. Yeah. Another reason why you might want that is, let's say like if you have a loved one or a relative who passes, and maybe you want to see what kind of subscriptions they may have had. That's what I was also trying to look into Rocket Money for. It was to see like, how could I use this in other ways in that, like in that example. But I think it would be a little bit challenging because you would need most people like I, I have multi-factor authentication set up on all my bank accounts. So in linking the accounts with Rocket Money through that plaid, well, of course, if you have your multi-factor authentication, that's either getting a code on your phone or using an app that could be problematic with if you're trying to help a loved one that has passed to get all those things unless you have access to their phone or any of those things so if you have access then yes i think that would be a great tool to use but otherwise reverting back to like getting bank statements or credit card statements and comparing month over month to see What are the duplicates? What are those recurring charges to help you get through that? And it might also help you uh, with identifying fraud where somebody's, you know, one of those small numbers that they keep sucking out of your bank account each year. So that's where we are right now. Our second quarter goals include setting up our password manager for the family. That way, all of our accounts that we've now identified using the rocket money, making sure that those passwords are included in our password manager for the family. We're going to alternate paying bills. It's kind of scary. Mm-hmm. I'll be uh, paying the bills starting next month. Right. And I just want to say, like, we should all be doing that. We should have been doing that. We should have been doing it. I'm scared. Um, I usually do it because that's that's one of my sh- strengths, I think, is doing that kind of part, that part of family stuff at home. That whole family stuff. And I like to do it, but I think it's also helpful. Obviously, if something were to happen to one of us, you know, it would be easier for the, your loved one. So if you're not already doing that, I challenge you and your Q2 goals to maybe also alternate paying the bills with your spouse or your loved one or your partner so that it's easy for everybody. And learning the task while we're clear of mind, clear of mind and not worrying about it. You know, if something were to happen to us. So we're going to do that. We're going to start decluttering. I mean, we've kind of started doing this and that, but we want to really put some thought behind everything and and start decluttering the house. And in doing so, while we're decluttering, we're going to update our own legacy ledger to make sure that the stuff that we have, I don't know if you noticed behind us, I actually went through and I labeled my books. 
Mm-hmm. So I got all my books for my Pokemon cards labeled. And my son found it useful yesterday because he went to a, a tournament. He's like, hey, dad, can I take this card from this set? I know exactly where it is because it's labeled. I'm like, all right, yeah, whatever, dude. So, Speaking about decluttering, going back to that, I actually signed up for a challenge that's coming up. And actually, by the time this podcast airs, the challenge will have ended. But it's about decluttering in like 10 minutes a day. So I'm really looking forward to trying to learn some tips here to help help me get rid of some stuff. And who knows, maybe that person will come and be a guest on our show one day and give us all some tips that we could share with you all. And in regards to updating those home assets on your legacy ledger, that's what we're also working on. Another tool that we might can use is an app. It's a, well, when I get it set up, I wanted to practice with it. And then hopefully we will also have the person that came up with the app on our podcast to talk about it, but it, it involves helping with the inventorying your home, the bigger items anyway, and how to share them with other family members or relatives to see like, you know, Hey, I got this furniture piece. Do you want it? And if they don't, then maybe look at getting rid of it. Maybe look at selling it. Yes. Or seeing if another family member might want it. So things of that nature. Right. So, when we were talking about updating the home assets on our legacy ledger, just a reminder that the introductory price of $37 for the ledger will end on April 5th of 2024. So if you want to jump in and get it on the early bird price of $37, do so by April 5th of 2024. Do you have anything else, babe, you want to talk about? No, I just think that setting those goals. And we talked about this, I think, in the first couple of episodes about, you know, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. And that's what we're doing. Circle back to our central question. Where are you on your journey right now? And how often do you think you need to check that map? It's something you're going to have to tell yourself because, you know, we really can't tell you how often you should do it. But most experts say at least annually. So think about it. Awesome. All right. Well, until our next episode, reminder, every chapter you write today shapes your legacy tomorrow. And just like the vibrant hues of a setting sun, we're wrapping up another episode of Thoughtful Planning. Every shared story and insight is a step closer to turning uncertainty into celebrations of preparedness. Absolutely. And to our listeners, remember that every surprise that comes our way is an opportunity to grow, adapt, and learn. Stay tuned for more stories, expert insight, and of course, a touch of wit in our next episode. We're not just co-hosts, we're fellow travelers on this journey. For more information on additional resources, which will help you take the next step in planning, look for the link in the show notes for our membership. Join us next time for another episode of Thoughtful Planning. Until then, keep living, laughing, and loving every moment.